Imagine opening your eyes in the morning and being able to see the ceiling, but unable to move because your mind has no idea where your body is. Most people would likely find it near impossible to fathom. And yet this is exactly what happened to 19-year-old Ian Waterman. And no, he wasn't paralyzed, at least not in the typical way. He just lost his sense of knowing where his body was or what it was doing. Ian was strong, tall, and fairly athletic. He loved dancing and sports and had great balance and coordination. What Ian didn't know is that in an instant, balance, coordination, and movement would be an alien concept to his brain and body. While Ian's life may seem tragic, his story is one of remarkable resilience and triumph over adversity. Despite losing all sensation in his body, except for temperature and pain, Ian refused to let his condition define him. Instead, he chose to focus on training his brain to do something extraordinary. This is the story of Ian Waterman, the man who lost his body. Ian was living on an island called Jersey, which is somehow a British island, despite being so close to France. Someone, please, help me understand this in the comments. So Ian was working as a butcher here. And while at work, he accidentally cut himself. At the time, he didn't think much of it, but this small wound would set into motion a chain of events that would change his life forever. I cut my finger at the beginning of the week. Ian was hospitalized a few days later because the wound had gotten a nasty infection. He spent several days in the hospital, but one day was like no other. As he opened his eyes, his body felt weightless as if he was floating. He could not feel the bed sheets nor his body pressing against the bed. Yet he could feel the warmth of the room. I felt as I was floating on the bed. I couldn't feel the bed, but I just felt as I was floating on it. Really, really strange, and it's, it's really weird sensations in the, in the collar, the cuff, and the ankle, and rippling sensations across my stomach. Either. But strangest of all, Ian could not tell where his body was or what it was doing. What is this? To get a sense of what Ian lost, let's do a quick exercise to demonstrate what we do have that he doesn't. If you close your eyes, Hold your hands out in front of you, palms facing each other, but hands far apart. Now bring them together. Do it once more, but this time make them miss each other. How are you able to do that? If you can't see your hands, how do you know where they are? That, my friend, is your sense of proprioception, the ability of your amazing brain to understand where your body is in space and what it is doing without even seeing it. Subscribe if you just learned what proprioception is. Ian had lost proprioception in his entire body. His muscles and joints worked fine, but he had lost the fundamental ability of feeling them. Was this it? Would he ever feel again? Will he ever move again? No one knows for sure what caused this rare condition. However, it was theorized that his own immune system mistook his nerve cells for the virus it had been fighting from Ian's earlier infection and targeted them. The nerve cells destroyed were specifically the ones responsible for touch and proprioception. After six weeks, Ian was flown to Wessex Neurological Center. Here, after studying the condition affecting Ian, it was determined to be incurable. And so, he was sent home to live out the rest of his life in a wheelchair. When he got home, he was completely dependent, which of course had a devastating impact on his mental health. And this sort of like, you know, young adult being washed and, and fed by your mother. This is not on, you know. Yeah, I was difficult. When I had him home was his lowest part, you know, because he wasn't sort of getting anywhere and we was, you know, moving his hands and things like that. But then he went to Oddstock. After being home for some time, Ian went to Oddstock, where he spent 17 months. It was here that Ian began to develop the spirit of defiance against the previous doctor's prognosis. I fought long and hard not to go into a wheelchair. And I was arrogant and I was bloody minded and I was awful and difficult. I was a very difficult person. This spirit would be crucial for him to do what he had to do next. Ian figured out how to beat his disease. He realized that if he visualized a movement, he could make his body perform it to some degree through sheer concentration. For the first time in a very long time, Ian felt a glimmer of hope. But though he had figured out this crucial skill, he was still barely able to move with an immense amount of focus. In fact, it took Ian months to learn how to sit up unaided. And when he did for the first time, he was so excited that he lost concentration and his body collapsed back onto the bed. I remember tensing very, very much the tummy muscles and just sort of sitting up and I would 
fold up in the middle. I'd have to structure it in my mind and work my way through it. And that's how it is today. It hasn't changed. This was no simple way to move. He needed to hold his concentration 100% of the time. No movement or posture would ever be automatic again. But how far could he go with this new and strange way of commanding his body? What was his limit? To find out, Ian set himself an intense regimen of rehabilitation, analyzing every movement, working out which muscles would do what, and how it affected his balance. Things were starting to change for Ian. He took four months to learn how to put on his sock, and an entire year just to learn to stand safely. In order to keep control of his movements, his eyes would now have to tell his brain where his limbs were and what they were doing. By training his brain daily on this new way of moving, he had taught himself how to sit, how to stand, and even how to walk. While this was remarkable, Ian still had challenges. The biggest of which was that he needed to see his body to operate. If he walks into a room and the lights go out, he goes down. Without seeing his body, he has no sense of where it is or what it's doing and therefore won't know which muscles to activate to stay upright. To walk, Ian tilts his head forward to see his body and commands it to move by concentrating, planning, and visualizing the movement. Through this constant tremendous mental energy, Ian had done what the experts said was impossible. Through sheer determination, defiance, and a beautiful process called neuroplasticity. This is an incredibly powerful story that shows us that sometimes, even if the person telling you that you cannot do something is an expert in the field, they may still be wrong. If Ian can completely lose his proprioception and find it within himself to walk without it, whatever challenges you face right now, the possibility exists for you to turn things around. Thanks for watching. I really hope to see you again. You are awesome, my friend. Let no one tell you otherwise.